What is going on YouTube family? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. As you guys can see, I'm rocking my white coat right now. Just got out of a standardized patient encounter and thought I'd sit down and finally film this video for you guys. I threw up a little questionnaire on my Instagram the other day asking all my followers uh, to go ahead and send me messages they have regarding PA school. So got a few questions here that I'm gonna go through and try to answer. Hopefully give you guys some good insight on PA school. All of you guys that are applying to PA school give you guys some good ideas on maybe how you can improve your application and whatnot. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. All right guys, so the first question of today's video slash Q&A thing is gonna be how hard is it to maintain a fitness social media business and be a student, keep it up. First off, thank you for the support my friend. I wouldn't say that I really have a social media business per se, just because I don't really make any money <laughs> really from social media, but it is pretty challenging, you know, to like keep up on YouTube and Instagram and to try to keep like creating content while balancing everything I have to study for school. Um, definitely takes a lot of like forethought and planning ahead to kind of figure out what time frame that you can fit in, you know, going out and shooting some photos or recording this video. Um, so it kind of just takes planning ahead. Um, time is really limited in PA school. So you have to get really good at time management and thinking ahead. And if you want to do something like social media um, that requires going out and taking photos or recording a YouTube video, you got to definitely delegate out specific times for those things. So um, hopefully that helps. All right guys, so the next question I got is what did you pursue as your bachelor's degree and what would you recommend? So as most of you guys know from previous videos and whatnot, I went to Grand Canyon University, Lopes Up, and I got a bachelor's degree um, in biology specifically with an emphasis in pre-physician assistant studies. Um, and basically what I would recommend to you is that you choose whatever major at your university that's gonna help you take the classes that are needed when you apply for PA school. Um, so really, you know, you could do any major like biology, you could do chemistry, you could do biochem, you could do kinesiology. You definitely don't have to choose like a certain major per se, but you should always make sure that you are taking the classes that are gonna be required of you to take to apply to PA school. But I really enjoyed my education at GCU and I really enjoyed getting my biology degree. So that's definitely something that I recommend to you guys. All right guys, so the next question I got is, what kind of student were you in high school? In high school, I was just as motivated and driven as I am now, super hardworking. I was student body president my senior year, took all the AP, dual, honors, whatever classes were the highest level just because I knew that whatever education I got in high school was gonna carry over to undergrad and only help me there. And then in undergrad, I tried to challenge myself and work really hard as well. Um, just because again, I knew that however much effort I put in in undergrad and high school was gonna reflect on whatever uh, degree or uh, profession I decided to chase after in graduate school, which ultimately became physician assistant. So um, in high school, I was really hardworking. All right, so the next one is balancing lifting with school. Again, this one takes a lot of time delegation. You gotta really plan ahead. Am I gonna go to the gym right after class? Am I gonna study a little bit and then take a little study break and go to the gym, which is what I recommend. But there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, I've tried pretty much everything. And what I found is if I go to the gym right after class, sometimes I'm too tired to study. And then I found that if I put off studying at the very end of the day, that I'm too tired to go to the gym. So I definitely think studying for a little bit and then taking a little study break, going to the gym is probably the best thing to do uh, just cause you get a change of scenery, get the blood flowing. And then that way, when you finish your workout, you can come back and be just as productive with your studies. All right guys, so the next one is, what is something you wish you knew slash did better before PA school and overall advice? So something I definitely wish I knew before I started PA school was that how time consuming it's going to be. It's not necessarily that the material you're learning is like super difficult, granted it is pretty challenging, uh, but it's just a lot at you at once. Like this past weekend, I had to go through 130 pages for a test that I had on Tuesday uh, for physiology. So it's just a lot all at once. You gotta really keep up with all of the other classes at the same time, which can be challenging. Um, but basically, I just wish I knew how much time it was really gonna take up. I heard mixed things from different people before I started. And had I known how time consuming this was gonna be, I probably would have enjoyed the last bit of freedom that I had. So that's definitely something that I wish I knew before I started PA school. But honestly, man, in terms of overall advice before starting PA school, I would just say go in with an open mind, you know, how 
however you did in undergrad obviously got you here you're meant to be here for a reason if you got accepted to PA school uh, you may not get the same exact grades that you did in undergrad or high school in PA school just because it's super rigorous um, but I would say just don't let that get you down uh, keep your eye on the prize just keep working hard because at the end of the day it doesn't really matter you know if you got a B or if you got an A because as long as you keep persevering and you work hard you're gonna become a PA all right guys so the next question I got is what type of specialty do you want to be in and as of right now I don't have my mind made up I'm still keeping all my options open I have my rotations coming up here in a few months that I'm gonna be starting and I'm gonna kinda of let those guide my decision. Right now though, I'm interested in emergency medicine, urgent care, cosmetic medicine. I'm also interested in orthopedics. So I'm kinda of just gonna see where everything takes me and uh, I know that I'll end up where I'm meant to be. Where do you want to go after PA school to settle down for a bit? Back to Arizona. What has been the biggest adjustment or struggle for you since starting PA school? I would say going back to the time management, you know, finding when is the right time to record a YouTube video or when is the best time to go out and take photos for Instagram uh, when it doesn't interfere with my studies just because we have like two tests a week and so it can be pretty challenging to try to figure out you know and stressful just thinking about okay I gotta like take away time from studying um, when I'm studying like for multiple hours a day um, to go take photos or film a video and then like if I'm filming a video I gotta edit it too um, so I'd say the biggest struggle is like having a life outside of school, um, you know, but the hustle's worth it. What made your application stand out from your peers who also applied? I think just being me, um, <laughs> that sounded really cocky. But in all honesty, guys, I think, you know, as long as you put some individuality into your application, you're gonna stand out. Like, um, I put on my application that I competed in a few men's physique competitions, um, that I did work for Ghost and whatnot. Um, obviously, you know, they're going to be looking for GPA, GRE score, patient contact hours and all that kind of stuff. But the more you can kind of like show your personality throughout your application, it's just going to help you stand out. And they want to see different people and they want to invite different kinds of people to interview day. So as long as you throw in some stuff about you that's unique to you into your application, I think that that's really valuable. What's the hardest part about PA school? Definitely time management. <laughs> How much studying do you do on average per day? So I'd say during the week after I get out of class, probably study for uh, like this quarter, like five hours, honestly, last quarter and the quarter before it was probably closer to like six or seven, but so far this quarter hasn't been that bad. So I'd probably say like five at the most during the week, which is pretty crazy because it used to be whack. It used to be insane. Uh, but on the weekends, I still study um, eight, maybe 10 hours a day if you know there's a really huge exam with a lot of material coming up. Um, so that'll be like eight to 10 hours on Saturday and Sunday, and then probably like five hours each day during the week. Most difficult part of your pre-PA years, shadowing, contact hours, GRE prep. I would definitely say the GRE prep I didn't take as seriously as I should have, but I ended up doing pretty well. Personally, I think standardized tests like that, I think they're kind of silly because you can go in there one day and score really well. You can go in there the next day and score like completely different. Um, so I would just say, you know, in regards to the GRE, this isn't really a GRE question, but I would just say get the prep book, uh, study it as much as you can. I studied for like, I think like four to six weeks and then just went and took it. Um, if you don't get the score you like, just go take it again until you get the score you like. I wouldn't take it more than like two or three times though. At that point, I would just submit whatever score is the highest. But honestly, I'd probably say the hardest part of the pre-PA years was finding places to let you shadow or finding places to get your patient contact. Uh, just because a lot of these programs these days want like a couple thousand patient contact hours. Um, so you're basically gonna have to find like a full-time job, um, you know, whether that's as an EMT or a CNA or a medical assistant or some sort, uh, just to really get those patient contact hours. Uh, for me, I had like 750 pharmacy tech hours when I first applied, along with like 200 from uh, like 250 from a primary care office. So I applied with like a thousand, and then I kept working at the primary care office as a physician, <laughs> not as a physician assistant. I wish as a medical assistant, and uh, I just kept re-updating my application with the hours that I had accumulated. So, um, but I definitely think it's hard and challenging sometimes to find like offices that will let you come in and shadow them uh, just because it does take time out of their day to kind of like show you what they're doing and whatnot. 
Um, so if you have an inn or a doctor that's gonna let you kind of step in and uh, go around with them for the day, I think that that's awesome. Um, ideally, try to find a physician assistant that'll let you kind of shadow them. Um, I kind of had some trouble with that before I uh, started working at the family practice office. I couldn't really find a PA that um, would let me shadow, so I shadowed mostly doctors uh, before I started working as a medical assistant, but then when I became a medical assistant, I was working mostly with PAs. So um, definitely think that the hardest part of the pre-PA years was getting those hours. How many patient hours did you have entering PA school? It's kind of like I just said, I had a thousand total when I first applied. 750 of them were from being a pharmacy tech at CVS, and then the other 250 were kind of split between the family practice that I was working at and the med spa that was next door. And then as I just kept working and my application was sent out, I just kept updating and adding more hours and whatnot. I think when it was all said and done, uh, like when the application cycle was over, I had been working there for like a year and I think I had like 1700 hours maybe at that time. So as many hours as you can get, the better. I know some programs want a two, 3000, uh, so get them hours. How much shadowing did you have completed at the time of application? So when I initially submitted my application, I had a total of 50 shadowing hours which is kind of on the lower end. I would have liked to have had more uh, when I applied, but obviously I got in. So of those 50 hours, I shadowed a pediatrician, an oncologist, and a plastic surgeon. And honestly, the hardest part about getting those hours isn't necessarily finding someone to let you come in and shadow. It's like accumulating the hours. For example, the pediatrician I shadowed, I went in for like three or four hours one day, and then the next week I went in for another three or four hours. And at that point, he kind of asked me, he's like, you know, like, do you want to keep doing this? Um, you've kind of seen like what my day to day looks like. Um, and it really does take a lot of time out of their day to kind of you know, show you kind of like what the ins and outs of their job are because obviously you know what, you know, the visit looks like when you're the patient, but you don't really know about like all the back end stuff that they do. And then to have them kind of like take you through it and for you to kind of like just tag along for the visits. Um, sometimes patients aren't all that comfortable with it. So you can kind of be more of a distraction in the office. So at the end of the day, it's not really hard to find somebody to let you shadow, but it's just hard to accumulate those hours because you might get six hours with one doctor or one PA, but then there might be one uh, PA or doctor that'll let you come in multiple times a week and get a whole bunch of hours, get like 20 hours. So it kind of really all just depends, but I'd say that that's definitely the hardest part about getting those shadowing hours. All right guys, so the last question of today's video is, what's the GPA that is needed in order to stay in the PA program? So for my program specifically, we have to maintain a GPA of at least a 2.75. Um, and what that kind of looks like is that any grade that you get in a class that's a 93 or higher is an A, which is a 4.0. Um, anything from a 90 to a 93 is an A minus, which is a 3.7. And then a B plus is an 87 to an 89.9, which is a 3.3. And then anything from an 83 to an 87 is a 3.0. And then anything from an 80 to an 83 is a 2.7. So basically, if you go throughout PA school and all you get is B minuses, your total GPA is gonna be a 2.7 and you won't pass. Um, but the lowest grade that they let you get in any specific class, like any one class, is a C. You have to get at least a 70% to pass the class. But your total GPA of all the classes that you'll take has to be over that 2.75. So, but that's gonna conclude today's video, you guys. I hope it was super insightful. I hope uh, those of you that you know sent me those questions that this was helpful for you. If you guys want me to do another Q&A and answer more questions, just let me know down below. I know I got a lot of you guys that are interested in PA school or that are in PA school. Um, and so I'd love to answer more questions or do specific videos on topics that you guys uh, would like me to. So give this video a thumbs up because it really does help the channel grow and get my videos out there. Um, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.